My name is Bonnie Hutt and in this series we will be interviewing artists that live in Australia who paint loosely within the visionary art, surrealism or imaginary realism genres. We sometimes try to ask questions of our artists that are a little different so um, hope you enjoy the show. Are you self-taught or did someone else teach you to paint or draw? Uh, my earliest memories were of sitting at a little white desk that my dad made. It was just this little thing and I sat at that desk and I painted and I don't remember much else that went on around me because I think I was creating a little bubble that was separate from whatever was going on around me. Um, so I had the talent when I was born and then when I was young my mum used to go into this little room and she would paint with oil paints and she, was, she is very talented but she just stopped doing that for some reason. So the smell of oil paint always reminds me of those early days when my mum used to do oil painting in the, the little room at the back of our house. Uh, as I grew up, I had teachers and one, the one that stands out the most was my high school teacher. And she believed in me. She was this one person that said the right thing, this one little sentence like, you're amazingly talented and don't ever do commercial art. Don't do commercial art. And I listened to her. And I suppose she was one of the ones that were at the crossroads. Okay, it would be very easy to go into commercial art because that's what makes money. That's what everyone says you should do because you should make money out of art. But instead I went to fine art. And um, she was just a person that directed me in that way. Uh, yes, I did have talent right from when I was born. And these were my teachers along the way. Uh, and then at age 29, um, I met the teacher who, I, who was in that portrait. That's the portrait of my teacher. He was a, um, my mentor. He was from America and he was retired here. And he was a very, very strong influence in the awakening of the youth of the 60s when the Vietnam War was happening and everything and he inspired them all to rebel against the war. Um, so he was retired here in Australia and he, I was just a mum with two kids and just like this innocent person that was just ready to be guided. Um, and he saw my talent and he decided to take me on as his protege for seven years where pretty much I just completely dropped off all normal life. My children were with me, but it was just not normal life. It was completely focused on making art. So yes, I have had teachers, profound teachers who have affected my life profoundly, but my talent was there when I was born and it was passed down from my um, mum and my dad's side actually, yeah. I uh, went into art school and got a BFA in illustration and a master's in painting from uh, two of the United States top art schools. Well, my, my background was, um, I was drawing and making art since I was pretty young, you know, most of my life. And um, yeah, both my parents were, were artists, my mother not, but wanted to be. So I sort of grew up in that nurturing, uh, art nurturing environment, and um, then I went to I went to university and studied painting at RMIT in Melbourne, and but then found that I wanted to to learn more about the sort of traditional um, European painting approach. So uh, I travelled to to Vienna and Austria, and then I met a teacher there and studied with him for for about nine months, and. Um, 
Yeah, so it's been it's been a journey of, of learning and, and teaching now. So you know, like teaching and learning, becoming a teacher myself and and also never finishing that learning process, always being open to new ideas and um, yeah, also teaching has been really a learning experience to being forced to um, share concepts and things which maybe I didn't know about before or had to had to relearn or so it's it's been really about um, being a, a teacher but also remaining a student having both things hand in hand it's really, really nice it's a natural drive and I had an innate in addition to the drive a, a, a talent that I developed throughout my life and um, where now it is my lifestyle. I, I'm fully an artist's career. I did go to tertiary education for my art training. Uh, did graphic design and fine arts. Um, however, I actually think I was self-taught. Uh, the genres that they were kind of pushing, well especially in the fine arts, was not really the genre that I paint in today. Um, and it is somewhat well known that most visionary artists, for whatever reason, are self-taught. Uh, why that is exactly, I'm not sure. Possibly because the tertiary institutions don't teach this kind of art, or not many do anyway. I was self-taught to an extent, uh, definitely began my exploration into drawing and painting at a young age um, because I was fascinated with, with it and that grew into um, art classes after school and on the weekends and then I, I went to uh, a TAFE to do fine arts and was only there for a year and that was in West Wollongong where the steelworks were prominent and the whole genre there that was very popular was um, like a deconstructed uh, industrial abstractism and I wasn't into that at all in fact I was into visionary art back then at 18 but I didn't know what that was I didn't know the word visionary art back then but that's what I was you know, beginning to do. I could see now um, my paintings back then were very much budding into this this um, genre. And so, um, yeah, so I didn't last very long at that um, institute because I just didn't really fit in. So I stopped to pursue my own thing, to create my own business called Omniculture to develop my own style. And so um, I've been, you know, uh, a little bit uh, independent and um, so I, I seek my own sort of um, way of interpreting my spiritual journey into my art and then over the years I've also had other teachers, mentors I would say. Uh, primarily self-taught. Uh, I was pulled out of school at the beginning of or early grade three uh, and there wasn't really much else to do except for draw and play video games. Uh, did a little bit of uh, graphic design and like digital media and stuff at TAFE, but yeah, mostly just. Does creating art demand a lot of focus? Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, you, you need focus, you need perseverance, you need patience. Um, I think these are things which are developed through the art making process. So the more you, you create, the more you, you work at your art, the more focus you get. And you're able to, you know, spend hours in front of something without getting distracted or bored. And um, I think it's just something that you, people need to develop. Maybe people that are really, um, busy all the time or, or can't focus their mind you know sometimes the, making the art can be like a meditation it can help them to to focus on one point 
And you know, often when, when you're creating your art, you can get lost in it. You, can, you don't need to think about your problems. It can become like an escape. And also it can, um, it can help you be in the present moment because you, you sometimes need to focus on what your hand is doing, you know, what you're creating. And when you're doing that, you're not thinking about the things in the past, you're not thinking about the future, but you're actually here now. So artists spend a lot of time in the present moment during the process of creation. And, and that's kind of when, when you feel that you're really in that creative zone, you, it feels like, um, like there is no time. You know, you're almost in this kind of timeless state. And that's the most beautiful part of um, being in the art making process, I feel. Yes, I feel creative, creating art demands a lot of focus and this is um, usually a juggle between um, all the things that we do in our life and the creative process is um, something that is a commitment. Uh, so. so I uh, have run an art school for quite a few years and I've taught many, many people to paint and draw. Um, I, do, I did find that one of the, if not the most, um, the biggest issue is people's ability or inability to focus. Um, now, it does depend on what the person does for a living. Some people are surgeons where they focus a lot. Um, other people uh, do, you know, of course, other things where they don't have to focus so much. Of course, the people who focus in their jobs. Um, you know, can paint more, or can paint better, because they got that ability. Um, and of course, in modern day society, we now have this major attention deficit disorder thing going on, uh, because of the, all the mobile phone frequencies, and Wi-Fi, and um, Facebook on our phone. Uh, people are very scattered and distracted. Um, far more than they were even a decade ago. Um, so you do notice that people's ability to focus uh, has diminished. And um, without focus, we just can't do anything or achieve a lot. Yeah. Um, I think it's also made people a bit more lost. Mm. Yes, it does usually require a lot of focus. Um, and not always, as in once the process is underway, then uh, often I find I can get into a kind of trance, which is uh, well, it's a kind of focus, but in a, um, not in a, a, a usual conscious way. It's a um, kind of trance which engages the subconscious as well as creative trance. It's, it's still focus, I guess, getting into that state in the first place requires focus. And also discipline, because uh, because it's usually a solitary process. Making art, well, often is um, the the impetus, the discipline required to to begin uh, to just go into your own space and your own trance and, and begin the work uh, can require a bit of focus. But then once that's underway, usually the uh, the creative trance just uh, begins to do its own thing. You might notice if you sit down to try and meditate, the brain automatically tries to look for distractions. You know, you've got to clean the house, do the washing, do this. And that's what sometimes happens when you sit down to paint. Definitely painting requires a lot of focus. For example, these paintings here took um, four to six months each to paint. So I guess it was like a long meditation for each painting and many veils of um, form and colour. So definitely I had to hold focus for months um, on that one subject matter, sometimes varying to other um, paintings, but Basically, yes, it requires a lot of focus, and that's becoming seems to be becoming more difficult to focus in this um, modern age. Well, when I was doing my work, it was mainly there was no social media, there was no internet. I mean, that sounds ancient, archaic, but it was just before the emergence of um, technology, and I. 
it's a good thing but it's also a double-edged sword because it takes you away from that one-pointed focus um, without the distraction. So definitely focus is a big thing and if you can't focus and direct your energy into one point, um, I don't think you could reach completions with works. Mm. Definitely yes. Um, with my with my work, I need to be in a completely shut off room, no external noise, which is why I generally paint at night time. Uh, it's, it feels like the whole world has to be asleep for me to actually have that yeah that mental quiet where I can tap into. As I was saying before. Like, art is my meditation, so, yeah, definitely a lot of focus, a lot of specific focus. Yeah, creating art definitely takes a lot of focus, um, and it was something that takes a long time to uh, learn how to finish an artwork, I think. Um, for me, personally, I, I probably took about, uh, no, 10 years before I was actually finishing artworks to a level I was happy with rather than just abandoning them at later stages. Um, yeah, can definitely be a stumbling block for some people and it's, it's just a matter of doing it over and over again until you're uh, happy. Is the subject matter you use in your own work from your own life experience or do you create a new reality? The answer to this one is both. Um, I paint from my own experience of my meditation practice, my seeking. I've been a seeker all my life and I have journeyed into different spiritual practices to find what techniques work for me and I have formed a compilation of meditation practices that help me to go into creative process and centre and achieve my highest potential. So during the journeying um, it's really hard to put into words. Uh, I'm experiencing and I'm painting at the same time. So the spiritual practice is an artistic practice. It's, they're one, they're, they're the same thing, they're not separate. So the uh, subject matter of my work is my personal spiritual experience. And I do that because I just can't help but do that. It's just what seems to be what I'm born to do, so. Uh, when I was a teenager, I, um, I had, uh, had a concussion which damaged uh, my brain and optic nerves in, in a way um, that altered how my eyes and nervous system takes in inf information, filters the information from reality because it, it's been calculated in optical physics and neuroscience that we perceive less than 0.000001% of all the energy information that surrounds us at all times. We're literally uh, swimming in a sea of information and we only perceive uh, perceive as physical reality and sensory experience what we have the vocabulary to perceive uh, what we've what we've learned um, uh, morphogenetically through evolution and personally our belief systems of what is perceivable and so um, through my own personal development and and a somewhat lessening of the conscious filters of perception, I've gained a familiarity with perceiving subtle energies of, of experience. 
And so in some of my artwork, I, um, I, from, from experience in natural, uh, in nature, I also am striving to, um, communicate these subtle energies that I'm perceiving in environments. I guess it upon, uh, depends what you f uh, consider reality. <laughs> um, for me, like dreams and waking life are they're the same thing. Like, you know, I'm definitely not crazy, but I've definitely been walking through you know the main streets of a city where stumble through like what I can only put into words is stumble through portals, end up in different realms, like. So I try and collect um, interactions with, um, with the things in other realities, whether it be dream state, through meditation, or through, as I was saying, yeah, crazy portals, visitations, but also I kind of, take that inspiration or those interactions, blend it with uh, my own messages, my own, um, yeah, my own life experience as well and kind of merge them together to create, to create new realities and new beings and kind of making them both be friends. <laughs> yeah. In my own life experience, there's a richness that comes into every one of my paintings. Perhaps my research as well, um, from many different aspects of life, from ancient cultures to cutting edge, um, cosmic, um, exopolitics, <laughs> all helps to create a new reality. But when you put it into the context of an image, essentially a static image, a painting, it's, um, it holds the story of all of your life experiences, but also of this new reality. So, no, this is a broad question to answer. Um, I'm just trying to um, convey to you that... Um, one of my latest paintings is um, uh, <laughs> the idea or the concept of the m divine masculine and the di divine feminine um, coming into this sense of union. But then the pineal gland opens up and plugs into the center of the universe rather than being plugged into the matrix, the Babylonian matrix, which opens up a whole new reality of being able to um, consciously co-create. So that's, <laughs> that's something that I'm working on at the moment. The subject matter of my work I, does come from my own life. Um, and I also feel that I do cr definitely create a new reality. However, I think most of it comes from my subconscious mind. As we know, 90 to 95% of our um, cognitive um, thinking or cognitive journey is subconscious and often I paint something don't know why I've painted it and then the meaning of it comes out later. Is the artwork that I create from my own life experience a lot of the artwork I create feels like it comes through me um, it's it's like channeling it's um, it's hard to explain and that's why I create my art is is for me to understand a lot better it's a deep for me, it's a deep understanding of my spiritual self and it's a way of expressing myself uh, as an artist. Does the quality of your art have much to do with the success of the artist? Because the success of an artist depends on so many factors, including luck. Um, from my experience, it doesn't matter how talented you are, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be successful in the worldly sense. Um, and what is the definition of success? Success to me is 
mastering yourself, being in competition only with yourself, completing works of art and mastering your style, mastering yourself really. And if you can go through that and mature, constantly mature, constantly evolve and come to a place where you look back on your life and you can see that you've got healthy relationships with the people that you love. Um, and you've got basic living, healthy living, and you've got a clear conscience and you've got enough to survive. You keep your life simple, don't have too much. To me, that's success because you can reach places of peace and just joy in creative process and with your loved ones. That's success to me. Mm. It would be interesting if um, there were exhibitions and more competitions where the artists didn't sign their names mm. and uh, the artwork uh, just carried itself. Mm. Um, to see what people uh, thought was quality and not so much quality. That's a great idea. Because it takes away the ego and it brings it into a whole new realm of valuing for pure principle. You know? It's, it's also a massive social game. Like, the only way to actually really build something successfully is word of mouth and still trying to find that balance, but, yeah. Uh, yes and no. Sometimes artists are such a high caliber that they, they can't not fail. Um, but also there's many, many average artists out there with really good marketing that seem to do very well, especially in the days of the internet. Thank you for watching the show. Do join us again next week for some more great insights into the world of these artists.